Byconomy is one of those cryptos that uh, often people have asked me in the comment section to make a video about and here it is for all those of you who asked for it. And with Byconomy, I'll begin a whole series of mid cap cryptos that I will try and analyze uh, because this is probably where you can expect your next 100x, 50x kind of returns in the next bull run. So in this video, I'll talk about what's great about Byconomy, what, the, what are the good things about it, what are the risks and what should you really be doing at this point of time. To begin with, what exactly is Byconomy? So Byconomy is creating this uh, the, these tools that are required to onboard Web2 users to Web3. They're solving for the adoption problem, right? And so essentially they uh, give out this SDK that other protocols, Web3 protocols can integrate to make uh, onboarding very easy. So they're more like an enterprise uh, or a crypto to crypto kind of a model. To begin with, what are the problems? The first one is that they are solving for the problem of onboarding Web2 users, right? And which among them, right? The first one is of course, signing up. Today, if you go to any Web3 protocol, if you go to a game like Axie Infinity, or even if you open Sandbox, uh, Decentraland, the first thing it'll really ask you is, uh, you know, log in with your, or rather connect your wallet, right? Because your wallet is your identity. It's not your Google account, it's not anything else. In Web3, wallet is your identity. And without a wallet, you're not able to interact with this protocol. However, the sad part is that majority of the world do not have wallets yet, or they're not even aware how to create one. Okay, this is where bridging the gap between Web2 and Web3 becomes very important. So what exactly is uh, Byconomy doing? Byconomy has partnered with Web3 Auth. Now Web3 Auth makes it easier for you to sign in or sign up with familiar logins like your Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. All your social logins. Not see phrases, nothing required, uh, recovery is possible. Um, and of course they don't store your secret key and so on. So all the good things in, in one place, right? You can even sign up with your email for that matter. And they will create a wallet for you and ensure that you are able to interact with the Web3 protocol. Uh, now, this is the interesting part, right? So Web3 is doing, is trying to bridge, um, Web3 also is trying to bridge Web2 users to come on board to Web3. And Byconomy has partnered with them. That's the first problem that they're solving. Next, they're solving for DApp to work without purchasing, right? How is that? Well, they have introduced something called gasless transactions. What is gasless transactions? Well, in a lot of D apps, if you have to interact with the protocol, you need to have at least some amount of um, some amount of uh, crypto for you to pay for the gas. Right? Let's say you have to get a you know you have to mint an NFT. Right? Uh, if you've seen most cases, they just tell you that I just have enough uh, ETH for you to pay for the gas. That's all. Otherwise, the NFT is free. But the sad part is most people aren't even able to put up that and hence adoption is not happening in for many of those people that's and that's like in thousands or millions so how do you get those people in well uh, there is a way where the d app itself can create some sort of a gas tank that will pay for all these uh, gas transactions and hence making it free for the user so it's gasless for the user end user right now that is the second problem that by economy is solving the third one is buy cryptos on the go. In a lot of places, you know, you come to a game, for instance, let's say you come to a game, right? You don't know um, that you needed this crypto. And there are like 18,000 cryptos. You can't keep buying every crypto there is. Right? So uh, you, need a, you need this crypto and you're not able to play this game. So what they do is they also integrate with this uh, service called Transac, with which you can buy crypto within that particular D app. You don't have to go to your centralized wallet or centralized exchange and then buy it or a DEX and buy it. You can just buy it within that D app itself and it gets credited to your uh, uh, wallet, right? And the interesting part is you can do it with uh, even fiat and it is supported in most countries. That's inter that's like really amazing to onboard Web2 to Web3 uh, from a user point of view. So uh, these are the great things that Byconomy is doing as of now. Um, then the next big thing that they are doing is the fact that they've made it non-custodial. Uh, so this is very important because otherwise we'll have an FTX like scenario. I always, uh, you know, am for somebody who is non-custodial. So that's another great thing for me while looking at Byconomy. So what is good? The first thing, there's a genuine need in the market to push adoption, right? Of course, crypto has been around for more than 10 years now, but it is adoption is taking it 
you know, taking its own pace. Um, any new technology follows this curve. It's called a technology dispersion curve. Um, you know, we are all in the early market. You and I who have bought cryptos, uh, or we have at least some knowledge of cryptos, we're all innovators, early adopters. Globally, the world is somewhere here. And we have to cross this big gap that exists to move into the mainstream market, right? And that's where you get your early majority or late majority. And that's 85% of the world's population who's sitting on this side of the curve. To bridge this gap, it is extremely difficult. Technology really has to prove itself. And that is where Biconomy comes into place. They are ensuring that that adoption gets that final push to go across and make sure that the early majority and, early and late majority can start getting the benefits of cryptos. So that's what is a good thing that they're doing for the broader crypto ecosystem itself. Then there is this great list of investors. Let me open that up. So Biconomy is backed by the likes of Binance, Coinbase and many other investors. It is very important for, a, uh, for an early stage crypto project like this to have sufficient funds so that they can create that critical mass and get things going. So they are backed by a good uh, set of investors and that's uh, very assuring. Then they are moving towards a DAO. Right? They are making all efforts to create a Biconomy DAO, uh, DAO so that the governance can eventually be shifted to the DAO. And this is steps in the right direction towards full decentralization. And lastly, they have a grants program that could see some success. So you want to encourage more and more people to use you. So you create like something like a grants program and Biconomy has also done that. This is uh, pretty much similar to uh, the strategy followed by a lot of other cryptos, right? So you have micro grants from like less than 5K to BFG cohorts, which are like greater than 25K USD. So they have all these grants that are on a rolling basis or at an, on an annual, semi-annual kind of a application basis. This could create that early ecosystem necessary for Biconomy to take the next big leap. So what are the risks? Coming to the risks, the first point is that dependence on third party tool are enormous, right? Like we saw two out of the three main things, uh, the Web3 auth as well as uh, the uh, fiat uh, that you, the crypto that you can buy using fiat, all those are integrations from third party tools and there's a huge dependence on them. Imagine tomorrow it just goes down for some reason, Web3 auth goes down. Biconomy is in serious trouble. So you need to probably spread your risk across more such protocols than having just one for each of them. That is the first risk. The second one is supply schedule could risk your di risk dilution. Biconomy has a 1 billion capped supply and we are somewhere a uh, little over year one. I think there are about close to 250 million uh, Bicos right now. And uh, we have at least another 750 to go. Uh, in the next three years. So the supply could look something like this. We are somewhere here. We have to reach here in the next three years. That means the number of cryptos in the bycos in circulation will almost triple or quadruple from here uh, by at least 2026. And that means a serious uh, price dilution unless demand uh, keeps up with supply. That is another big risk. And additionally, uh, Baiko is used for the governance, uh, of course, but beyond that, I did not see the demand levers for Baiko. That is not very clear. So that's something that I see as a risk. Another important thing is the full diluted value to uh, total value locked ratio is extremely high. Let me show that. If you look at this number, it's um, FDV to TVL ratio is like 95 for let's say a mature one like Aave for instance, it's 0.3, right? You see how different this is, how how much more this number, how much bigger this number is for Biconomy. Now that's a serious risk, right? Of course we can discount it saying that, hey, it's still early stages, but this is a number that we need to closely watch out for. This is also an indicator of adoption. So what should you do? Well, the first one is, carve out a portion of your portfolio for mid cap cryptos, right? If you're interested in mid cap cryptos, because it can give you the next 50 X or hundred X crypto, then carve out a portion, like let's say about 25% or whatever that number is, make a portion and say out of the thousand dollars or $10,000 or whatever amount you're investing, let's say 25% will go into mid cap cryptos, right? And stick to that. 
second thing is do your own research because if you do not then you are risking your investment based on someone else's advice i always suggest you do your own research this video is just to give you that head start give you that direction from where you can pick up and move ahead right uh, so do your own research and then decide where to invest and the third one is bet on the basket of cryptos in cryptos right they're very similar to tech startups uh, 90 95% of them will fail and that's a big risk this is a given they will fail maybe only about 5% will actually succeed and you don't know which one it is right we have so many cryptos we don't know which one is going to succeed we have so many l1s we don't know which one will actually end up becoming the de facto l1 in the future so what do we do we take a bet right now hypothetically imagine there were two crypto two cryptos solving this problem of web3 adoption right by economy and let's say crypto x i would put 100 dollars in each uh, because hypothetically let's say one of them grows by economy goes up to like let's say 500 that means a 5x on my investment and crypto x is like you know they shutter they go down to zero so i'm left with only by economy which is at 500 my roi would be about 1.5x now had i not invested in by economy had i invested only in crypto x then my returns would have been zero because crypto x have gone to zero right so this is a way to hedge your risk because we don't know which one of these will actually make it big but we don't but what we do know is maybe one of them will right so it's good to hedge your risk uh, and ensure that you have a basket of cryptos that will help you do that finally if you like this video do subscribe to the channel tell your friends about it and if you like any crypto that you would like me to analyze then comment and i will look into it add it to my uh, uh, add it to my list of cryptos stay tuned for more such amazing videos welcome to the wave crypto club